What's up guys? Now this is a, a very spontaneous video because I, I, we were meant to do a slightly more normal video today but I opened my phone to find the news which I'm sure you've all seen but I just I want to talk about it a little bit is the new world record Guinness world record for the fastest production car which was set by SSC and their Tuatara a hard one to say Tuatara 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 anyways and Ollie Webb at the wheel um, Ollie Webb you know legendary British racing driver I'm sure a lot of you know him. And I just wanted to talk about it because I think, I mean, this is huge. It's huge. And I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy that this kind of speed race is taking place despite everything that's going on in the world. There are still uh, people out there pushing themselves, you know, harder and harder to set the new standards, set new records. So massive respect for that but also the way it's done. And you know, when I saw the video at first, obviously I found it super impressive. I'll show you the video in a little bit. But when I started reading up about it and seeing the context in which it was done and just by how much they basically destroyed the competition, uh, I just wanted to like make a video to talk about that because I find it really cool. And they really deserve all the credit that they're currently getting right now. So a little bit of background. SSC, Washington based US company created this monster of a car, hugely aerodynamic, um, which allowed it to kind of pierce through that wall that the Bugatti Chiron Supersport, the previous record holder, kind of hit um, as it got close to the record that it had set. It's powered by a twin turbocharged 5.9 litre V8 producing 1,750 horsepower. Now, SSC you guys probably already know it uh, because of their ultimate aero that was already kind of accustomed to breaking records because it stole the speed record from the Bugatti Veyron back in the day um, at yeah around 260 miles per hour. That was then beaten by the Koenigsegg Agera RS at 200 and I think it was 85 miles per hour was their record. And then the 300 mile per hour mark Bugatti Chiron Supersport, which honestly, when that happened, momentous like huge that a car like that managed to do it and i told myself this record is going to be around for a long time kind of like when the mclaren f1 had that 244 mile per hour i believe it was record that lasted until the bugatti came along many many years later i thought that was going to be the case now with the chiron uh, super sport but ssc have come out of, out of nowhere let's be honest and destroyed that record. They destroyed it both on paper, but also just in the way they did it. So Bugatti have their own test track, and it's one of the only places in the world in which you can get up to these kind of speeds in these cars, right? And they took their Bugatti, their Chiron Supersport there, um, with a stripped interior. So not how you would necessarily buy the car. So completely stripped interior um, that wouldn't be homologated. And um, I believe they weren't also the tires that would be on the homologated version of the car. So yeah, and then they did their run and they hit that top speed of theirs only on one of those runs, right? So it wasn't their average. It was just one of the runs. So, you know, crosswinds, anything can have an effect. SSC come along, find a road, work with local authorities just outside of Las Vegas to shut down a road, public road, and set the record. Not only do they set the record, they set it in both directions. So their average is a record and they do it with the completely you know, stock production car. So the interior is the way it will be on the car. It's on road tires. You know, you've got Ollie just in there on a, a road, a public road, an open road driving just straight on this, you know, I think a double lane um, yeah, road in, in the desert in America. And it's so cool because it's not a track. There's so much, you know, more danger, I feel, to this. Dangerous in both cases. But I mean, for Ollie to get in there and go over 500 kilometers an hour, well over 300 miles per hour is not. So Ollie gets set up, right, in this production car. First run, 301 miles per hour, right? So Bugatti was 304.77 miles per hour. So a little bit behind that, then hops back into the car and does 331 miles per hour. That gives them an average of 316. So the average of both runs is way beyond Bugatti's already. But then that 331 mile per hour figure is absurd. So I want you guys to just, yeah, sit down, take a seat and watch this video because we've got onboard footage of Ollie doing the 330 mile per hour run.
I mean, yeah. I again, I mean, it looks scary. It looks intense um, in in the video, but doing that in, in real, I cannot even imagine. I'd love to say, oh, I, you know, I, I'd love to, you know, go there and, and do it myself, but I don't think I could. I honestly do not think, you know, first of all, skill set wise, but just bravery wise, 330 miles per hour on a public road like that. Obviously, it was closed. There weren't cars coming the other way, but yeah. And the crazy thing about this is in the Bugatti Chiron Super Sport Run, it kind of like yeah, hit this aerodynamic wall and, and was struggling as it crossed that 300 mile per hour barrier. Um, and you can see it's kind of like running out of breath there and then it ends, yeah, just under 305 miles per hour. Now, the SSC from 300 to 330 miles per hour, it like blasts through this. And Ollie's since said that he thinks the car could actually have continued further past 330 but obviously you run out of road there's crosswinds a few different factors so that's the craziest thing is they got to that speed and the car probably realistically had more to give you know what we could do we could just call ollie and ask ollie what was it i mean as best as you can describe because i'm sure you'll never be able to fully put into words what it was like what was that experience genuinely like it was the build up was was horrible. It was the build up was just I think because when we race in what we do day to day or Le Mans or single seats or any, anything quick but that we're used to, you know, even the stunt driving stuff for the films and stuff, we kind of know what's coming. So you have that background of knowledge. Um, and the weird thing with doing a world record is, is no one's ever done it before. So no one knows what can happen over that speed. Um, I mean, the tires are only rated to 200 mile an hour. The car, you know, no one has any idea what can happen at that. I mean, literally, like the tire manufacturers, like, do not go over 200 mile an hour. Like, they are not legal over 200 mile an hour. Yeah. Um, you know, we're doing 130 mile an hour more than that, and the only reason we let out is because of crosswinds. But the preparation was horrible because once I realised how big a deal it was. I was like, Jesus, a lot of people are riding on this. Like the car company, yeah. there's a documentary they're filming, hundreds of cameramen and producers and everything, jets, helicopters, everything. And I'm just there like... Oh uh, my God, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. Um, when I'm actually doing the run, I was very like subconscious, a bit like a qualifying lap, looking way in the distance because I couldn't look down or around me. You know, we're covering one and a half football pitches a second at that speed. So if I like look down at my speedo and look up, I've covered a ridiculous amount of distance. Yeah. Um, the dotted line on the road turns into a solid line, almost like a Star Wars warp in a spaceship. It's ridiculous. Oh my um, God. Yeah. So no. It was, it was crazy. It was crazy. Oh, insane. And because how many, how many runs did you end up doing? Just the two runs or did you do? No, so we did four. So during the week yeah. we practiced on an airport runway, but obviously you can't get up to speeds yeah, yeah. there. Um, and on the road itself, it took a year and a half to close, and it was closed um, up until around lunch. Um, but the wind was really strong that day. Um, so we like had a two hour window of, of wind that wasn't too bad. And we actually ended up doing the record run when the wind was four times as high as what it was when Koenigsegg did the record. No way. Um, yeah, so you so think there was more to it? Like there, do you think there was maybe a little bit more without the wind and maybe more time to do a few more runs and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, look, if we, Bugatti are never going to give their test track to anyone else, VW, but that test track is between trees all the way down, so it's sheltered from the wind. It's like four lanes plus wide with a barrier each side, and yeah. it's like the best place on the planet to do a straight line speed run. Um, if we had that kind of facility, or just got really lucky with wind and went back to Nevada and did it. I yeah. reckon there's a hundred percent another ten mile an hour in it, and then beyond that, I'm not sure. Maybe fifteen, maybe yeah. twenty. Who yeah. knows? But yeah. that, that could be a three hundred and fifty mile an hour car. But honestly, those tires need to be turned into a coffee table now because you should not reuse them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can imagine. Yeah. Well, they're gonna. They're, they're some pretty historic tires, and I mean, you are. You're now the fastest man on earth basically fastest man in a car i mean that's pretty cool to have yeah, that yeah outside of outside of planes and, and yeah, and yeah. Like jet engines and all that kind of thing in a car yeah fastest man on the planet in a car so that's pretty cool i'm gonna have to add it to the instagram bio pretty quickly well i think first of all instagram bio i think you should constantly wear a t-shirt with that <laughs> with that written i am the fastest man on earth um, <laughs>
Right, super cool to be able to hear from Oli then. I mean, yeah, mind-blowing stuff. Absolutely mind-blowing. So, yeah, I just, I thought it was one of those things I really wanted to talk about. This, I, I know I thought it with the Bugatti, but I really, uh, really can't see this record being beaten for a while. I mean, the obvious people would be Cunning's Egg, Bugatti themselves, Hennessy maybe as well, that could maybe come through and beat this, but I'm sure they're all sat there just applauding SSC as well and, and thinking, how, how are we gonna get past this one? Obviously, it's a mix of the aerodynamic work which was put together, the car's like a slippery fish going through the air and then you got 1750 horsepower so nuts huge congrats to everybody involved huge congrats to ollie as well for being the record holder uh, yeah guinness world record everything's been approved it's insane so big moment for the car community and uh yeah put down in the comments down below i'd be interested to know do you think this is a record that's going to hold for a while or do you think this is something that someone's going to come along and beat in the near future we're in this crazy speed race now and it's so exciting to see i mean we've gone from the agera to the chiron super sport to now the tuatara in quite a short period of time so yeah clearly this competition is is well on its way and i look forward to following it further so thanks for watching this video i hope you found it interesting and i look forward to seeing you guys again very soon cheers Bye.